Hello and welcome back to another Knights of the Old Republic playthrough episode. I have some bad news with this one. This is actually the second time I've been recording this part. I recorded this entire cave sequence and all the way to the end of Dantooine before I realized that none of the audio was actually being recorded. So huge bummer, I had to go all the way back to the first part of Dantooine, uh, to the beginning of the epi last episode, and redo all of that so I could get up to this point. Um, it was a total pain in the ass, uh, but that's all over now, it's all in the past, it, hopefully things should be moving on forward from there. Um, anyway, we've just entered this crystal cave. There are weird spider looking bug things called Kinrath in here. Um, we'll see more of these on Kashik, but for now, uh, they just inhabit this cave. <clears throat> They're not too hard to beat. The reason we're uh, taking a gander in here is because there are several lightsaber crystals in here that give you a nice boost to your damage early on. Also, they have a bunch of different colors. You know, yellow. You, you could have. Uh, you get a colored lightsaber when you pick your Jedi. Um, Alignment, you know, Consular, Guardian, or Sentinel, or whatever. But you don't actually have to use that color. You can have whatever color you want. So that's super nice. Um, and then... Uh, the, I'm not using, going to be using a lightsaber, but they're very useful for my allies. And you can also get uh, three plus lightsabers before you even get off of Dantamine. Because Basila has her lightsaber, and then Juhani has her lightsaber, and you have yours. And then there's another, at least... I, as I'm, I'm aware of two, at least, that you can get from the Mandalorian uh, Raiders. <clears throat> okay, so uh, there's crystal formations in this room. It's often hard to tell if you've already looted one of them, so I may just go back and forth between these. Uh, this, this place was such a pain in the ass before, and I'm hoping it won't be this time. I spent, like, five minutes trying to open one of these Kenrath eggs with blaster pistols, and it for some reason it just wouldn't open. Stuff like this would happen, so I just like equipped my lightsaber and uh, started it again. So I think I'll do that this time. Yeah, I don't know why you should be able to open these Kenra things, no problem. But I guess we'll break the rule and equip a lightsaber. I guess I need to unequip uh, my blaster on my offhand. Yeah, okay, there we go. And then we can add the lightsaber back in. Boom, hopefully this should work. Question mark, why are you missing, friend? There we go. That's what should happen. Now, not all of them have loot or something inside of them, but they do have crystals, uh, which are fairly useful items. There we go, got one there. Um, I'm hoping to do the exact same thing I did <clears throat> uh, <laughs> recording before, which was get off of Dantooine, or at least get to the Ebon Hawk, so that I could get off of Dantooine eventually. Mm. And there's actually one thing part of a sequence that I kind of messed up. Uh, when I was leaving the Ebon Hawk for the first time, I actually had a conversation with a mission uh, that you won't get to see. But it was just, you know, about mission's life and stuff like that, but she mentioned that she had a bro, her brother named Griff, and uh, that he's a touchy subject. So, um... If we talk to Mission, which is almost certainly another thing that will happen in this episode, because I'll get a level up, and then every time you level up, your your the game prompts you into talking to your characters. If we uh, talk to Mission again, we'll unequip this. Just know that she has a bro, and I will probably be asking her about her bro, because that is part of her quest for glory. And I think that might be everything in this dank and dark cave, so we'll fly out of there right now. In KOTOR 2, this cave exists, but it's much, much larger. That place is massive. It has a bunch of cool crystals in it, though, and then there's like a bridge sequence and stuff. And there's a bunch of Sith bad guys in there. Okay, so I did everything in this area. There is only, there's one more group of Mandalorians that I need to take care of before I head back to the Enclave. And I think they're in this direction. I gotta go to the Grove and then to the Metale Grounds. Because that's the Sanjo Grounds. We already did those Mandalorians. Um, these Cath Hounds just keep appearing. As we have discussed. Um, 
pretty soon here I'm going to be equipping my Jedi robe because it aids in your force power usage. And I have a Chani armor on right now, and if you wear armor and try to use the Jedi speed power, that's why it's grayed out in the bottom right. It just won't do anything. Some sneak attacks on this one. Should go smoothly. There we go. My voice is a little bit low right now because I woke up early today to record this episode and then I had to re-record it again. So it's a little bit fatigued and uh, when I'm waking up early in the morning, it my voice tends to get really super low. I'm not sure if that happens to a lot of other people, but for me, my goodness, you can tell very easily. <sighs> okay, so this is the last group of Manlories that we need to talk about. There's a flying uh, manta ray in the top there. Don't worry about it. You haven't given us enough money. Just want to have it taken out of you piece by piece. No, please. Take my wife and children instead. Anything. <laughs> uh, wife and children. Sounds like a good idea. These guys should be pretty simple. They're actually less than normal amount of Mandalorians. <laughs> And he did not resist my lovely stasis attack. I cannot wait until I am high enough level to use stasis field, which is just the area of effect stasis, which means that I'll be able to just massively increase the damage and or decrease the damage upon myself. <sighs> Wonderba. So we'll loot these guys and then probably just transit all the way back because I don't think there's anything else I need to do quite yet out here. There's a couple of triggers I need to hit back in the Enclave and then I will, and then right outside the Enclave there's more triggers I need to hit. Then I will head back out, then into the Starforge Temple thingy and yada yada yada. Yeah. We will get to all of that, no problemo. Alright, back to the Ebon Hawk. There we go. Oh, yes, okay. Remember, we already talked to Mission. She has a bro. I, I was a little snappish when we last talked. I'm sorry about that. I get a little touchy when it comes to Griff. It's kind of embarrassing telling people about him. It's complicated. Griff wasn't the most popular guy. He had his faults. But I still loved him, you know? Sometimes people don't understand. I never knew my parents. My brother always looked out for me. He's the one who brought me here to Tars. I was just a kid, only five. But I remember the trip, if you could call it that. We were stuffed inside a packing crate in a Starfighter's cargo hold with just enough food and water to make the trip. Not exactly first class, you know? I don't know the whole story. I was pretty young, but my brother owed a lot of money. Might even have been a few arrest warrants out for him, I don't know. The only way to get off the planet was to smuggle ourselves out. I mean, I don't want to make it sound like we were criminals. Well, maybe my brother was. See, this is why I don't like to talk about it. It makes Griff sound worse than he really was. My brother had his problems, but he always looked out for me. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Without my brother, I don't know where I'd be. He gambled and drank. And he was always borrowing money for his latest get-rich-quick scheme. But he had a good heart, you know? He taught me how to survive. He showed me how to slice into a computer security system, how to get inside a locked building without the entrance codes, and how to spot a wealthy mark for a quick shell game. Yeah, Griff did right by me. I really miss him since he left. I keep hoping he'll come back someday. He promised me he would. He fell in with a bad crowd. It's all Lena's fault. She's the one who took him from me. Just batted those long lashes at him and off he went. I don't want to talk about Griff and Lena. Just the thought of that space tramp makes my blood boil. Subject's closed as far as I'm concerned. If I'm gonna be any help to you, I can't be worrying about my brother running off with some intergalactic skank. So is there something else you need? Okay, have it your way. Sounds like a, a little bit of jealousy is happening there. But remember, she's young. She's supposed to be 14. Uh, I think we can give her a pass on that one. Okay, so we're gonna head to the council chambers, and I totally don't remember why we're heading back there. I think maybe Bastila has some dream she wants to talk about. I'm sorry, I'm a little out of it right now. 
You just visit this place so many times. Okay, there's this dude. You have done well, my pupil. The ancient grove has been purified, and Juhani's journey down the dark path has been halted. Because of you, she walks once more in the light. But though she was saved, do not dismiss what happened to her. Juhani is both dedicated and true to the ideals of the Order, yet she was still vulnerable to the dark side, as are we all. She struck her master in anger during her training, and injured her greatly. But it was Quatra's choice to test Juhani this way, and it seems to have made its point. Juhani has been redeemed, and you have passed your final test. Congratulations, Apprentice. Or should I say, congratulations, Padawan. You have proven yourself worthy of joining the Jedi. Let me be the first to welcome you as a full-fledged member of our Order. Uh, okay, I guess thanks for the compliment, but you weren't actually the person I needed to talk to. It was these folks. It is good to see Johnny has returned to the Way of the Light. You are to be commended for your role in this. Your actions give us great hope for the future. Your training is now complete, Padawan. And perhaps now, it is time we dealt with the matter of the dream you and Bastila shared. When we heard of the ruins in your dreams, Master Dorak recognized it as one of a series of ancient structures here on Tantooine. This one in particular lies to the east of this enclave. We sent a Jedi to investigate, but he has not returned. Perhaps sending him in the first place was a mistake. The Force is guiding you through your visions. It may be that exploring the ruins is a task tied to your destiny. That is why the Council has now decided you should be the one to investigate this. The secrets to stopping Malak may be hidden within those ruins. You must investigate them and find what Revan and Malak were looking for. Be sure to bring Bastila with you. There is a powerful link between you, and you will need to draw strength from each other during the trials ahead. I demand justice! The Central Family is a blight upon Dantooine! They must be punished! The Council will look into this matter, Mr. Metale. You must be patient. Your accusations have no proof, and we do not want you stirring up trouble with the Sandrals if there is some mistake. Mistake? My son Shen is missing! How can there be any doubt the Sandrals are to blame? There are other possible explanations for your son's disappearance. Ah, you Jedi are good for nothing but talk. I shall only wait so long before I take action on my own. As dangerous as the threat from Darth Malak and the Sith may be, we Jedi cannot simply abandon our other responsibilities. The Council has promised, Alan Matali, we will look into a son's disappearance. Should you have time, Padawan, you may want to investigate this matter. These two families have been settled here for some years now. And causing me no end of trouble. Indeed. They have been settled here for some time, and feuding ever since. If Shen Matali has not returned to his father, it may ignite a savage and bloody feud between the Matali and Sandral estates. We must not allow that to happen. Your study and training are important, of course. But the Jedi are not a cloistered order. Our influence and teachings must spread beyond the walls of our academies. It is in our real world that we truly prove ourselves worthy of the title Jedi. You would do well to remember this young Padawan. The task has its own importance. It may also serve to divert our minds for a short time. Something which carries its own rewards. What always bothered me about the Yoda character is okay. that his eyes blink independently of each other so the left eye blinks and then the right eye blinks after it and i just can't stop staring at him okay bastila again probably gonna get a few level ups here um unfortunately since she's a sentinel she's not high enough level to get the force powers i need her to get so we'll just end up throwing away something that i'll never use most likely the uh energy resistance power um, it would be really nice if you could like not use a force point there and just use it next time. Um, feats, 
double weapon fighting because her she has a double bladed lightsaber and then I think uh, night speed is the best choice here. Yep. Except close. There we go. We, we have to take Basil after this sequence and I'm going to equip her with the Jedi robe that I'm supposed to be wearing just because it gives her a higher defense value. Um, and then strength affects melee damage. And if it's higher than dexterity, it will affect the chance to hit. So Basila doesn't start with a lot of strength, so it's going to be really nice to give her strength. Also, we got a bunch of crystals on uh, in that cave, so we'll equip her lightsaber with the crystals. And now Basila should be doing an ass load of damage, which is you know pr probably pretty good. <laughs> probably something we want to do here. Um, if you want to have like a party that's well balanced you just take two jedis and your main character and it will just you should have no problems getting through anything in this game if you take those all those characters so we're gonna make our way out here to the courtyard <clears throat> and uh, I will notice that Nemo is gone oh <laughs> I guess we can talk to mission again here we go hey there. What can I do for you? I'm sorry for the way I acted before it's just that when it comes to Lena I tend to get a little worked up my brother and me had a good thing going. Sure, Griff had his run-ins with the law on Terrace, but we got by okay, until Lena came and ruined everything. She was a dancer at the cantina where my brother used to go play Pazic. Griff could be a real smooth talker, and it wasn't long before the two of them were dating. But Lena was used to dating rich Theresian nobles, guys with mountains of credits. Griff could never give her the lifestyle she was used to, no matter how hard he worked. I thought Lena would brush Griff off when she saw how poor he was, but for some reason, she stuck around. I guess she saw the potential for a big payday down the road. I saw Lena for what she really was, a busty, credit-grubbing cantina rat. She used Griff and took away the only family I had. After they'd been together for a few months, Griff told me he was leaving Terrace. He and Lena were gonna try and make their fortune off-world. He promised as soon as he made enough credits, he'd come back and get me, and we'd all live like royalty. That was two years ago. I haven't seen him since. I don't even know where he went. Oh, I know what happened. As soon as she got him off Taurus, Lena sunk her claws into Griff butt good. She twisted him around her little finger and made him forget all about me. I know I'll probably never see Griff again. Part of the reason I came with you was the hope that I could find out what happened to my brother. Don't worry. I won't let the search for Griff get in the way of what we're doing. Let's just get back to the task at hand. Is there anything else I can help you with? Okay, have it your way. Yeah, I guess Mission's being free-lipped today. She has, a, uh, you know, no problems spilling her inner secrets all in one hour. Have you found the Mandalorian Ra- Good. Good. Put them down like the animals they are. But now that you've killed some of them, they won't stop until you've defeated their leader. You must find him and kill him too. Thank you, young Jedi. If you don't come back and talk to John, that Mandalorian leader won't spawn in the grove. So you need to do that. Which is useful because it gets you my some lightsabers if you win missing. that fight. I can feel him like a hole in my aching heart. My droid? Destroyed? No. No, this cannot be happening. I can't bear to live without him. That was the lady who fell in love with her droid, and I just told her that I destroyed the droid, and she got all upset and ran back to the Enclave. Um, but don't worry, that will end correctly eventually. Hold on one momento, I got a message. Okay, there we go. No big deal. Okay, so down to the left here is the Jedi Temple that the Council was all freaking out about. I will be going there soon-ish, but I want to take care of those Mandalorians that uh, John was talking about. And that fight's kind of a doozy. That's totally a cheese fight, and I'll tell you the secret to beating that fight once we get there. But for now, it's just going to be a bit of a run towards that sequence. Now, I've been thinking about just, like, sp 
you know, at times like this when I'm just running to place from place to place, just not doing any commentary and just speeding the, the game up like 4x. Come on, mission. So slow. Um, so I might consider doing that maybe next episode or episode after that because uh, I think the next place I'm going to go is Tatooine. It just has this massive sand area that's super annoying to run around, even if you have night speed. And... Well, who are we talking about? Me, right? I'll probably just forget that I have night speed and just run there. So that's just an extra 5 to 10 minutes of time that you just don't need to be doing. Or thinking about, really. Alright, so... In case you were wondering, this is what it feels like to control a melee character. Because <laughs> you haven't seen it so far yet. And Basila is just a brute force tank for me right now. Strong enough to take a bunch of damage and uh, deal a bunch of damage as well. Uh, compulsively saving and... Um, the, these things like spawn five seconds after you load into the area, so sometimes it just spawns on top of your party. We're back here in the grove to kill those Mandalorian, the chieftain that I mentioned, and this guy is a beast. He will one-shot every single one of your characters, even Basila, if you let him do so. And uh, full disclosure, when I did this fight, recording the first time, I died once. How horrible of me, because I was not prepared to do it. So, um, we're going to heal everyone to full health with, with the broken heal mechanic. And then we're going to head all the way back to this place. And we're going to use... Oh, I guess we'll kill this thing first. Hopefully it doesn't do too much damage to Basila and I have to go back and heal again. And retry. Okay. Um, so, what we're going to do is, since they're all grouped up at the start of this fight... <laughs> slowly approach. We're going to throw, have everyone throw grenades at the start, and then try and aggro the main Mandalorian chieftain, which is this guy in red here, onto my character, who won't do any shooting, and he'll just run around and get the Mandalorian to chase him the entire time. And, okay. So, uh, I have a couple of plasma grenades, which do the most damage right now, so I'll be using those. So, queue up a plasma grenade on everyone. We'll be doing 3x plasma damage to the first one because the first thing that all of the enemies do is turn on energy shields. There you go. There's the first plasma attack. There's my guy. Usually I can get away with an attack, but I might not this time. I might just bail. Um, we'll keep throwing a grenade with Basil and Mission just to keep them in the same spot, and I want to get the main guy to aggro on my character. So take a small step forward, and hopefully he's running after me. I think he is. Okay, keep going, keep going. Okay, yes, he's aggroed onto me. So if I keep running around like this, he won't hit me. And if he hits me with any attack, I'm pretty sure I will die. So Basil is going after him, and I want her to clean up the remainder of the Mandalorians that are there. And since I threw a couple of grenades, they're all dead. Mostly dead, at least. Um, and since I'm running around here, if I have mission attack, she might get some sneak attacks on to the main Mandalorian bad guy. Okay, sweet. So we're running around. What might happen is if Basila put, gets him in engagement, he'll turn around and hit Basila. Okay, that's exactly what happened. Good job. Uh, good defense there, Basila. She's de and I can't quite stasis him, so I, my character might die here. Okay, luckily he didn't do a power attack, and... So almost down, Basila barely died. Okay, cool. So that worked really great. And that is how you super hardcore cheese this guy. As you can see, I just got two lightsabers. That's basically why we're doing this fight. Because lightsabers are a nice commodity to have early on. Although they're a dime a dozen later. Especially when you get hit two Korriban. Yes. Which I was reading a guide online. Like what the, what the what theoretically is the best order to um, approach all of the planets. And everyone was saying that you should go to Korriban first because it gives you good crystals. But honestly, for story purposes, if you go to Korriban first, it just doesn't feel right. Korriban just feels like the 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 penultimate nasty place, whereas the nasty pl the the ultimate nasty place is you know, obviously the Star Forge and where the bad guys are. But Korriban is where all the Sith are. And if you go there first, it just feels like you're just assaulting them head on right in the beginning of the game. Um, so we're going to head back to the Starforge Temple that we were talking about earlier, or the, the council was talking about earlier. 
I'm kind of, oh, I forgot about this. There's like a journal entry with this guy. Um, I don't actually think that's a quest. Maybe somebody on a different planet asked you to find him. Who knows? Um, we'll go ahead, hit up this courtyard once more. And then the Star Forge is basically, or not the Star Forge, the uh, temple is right here. Nearby two Kenraths, or maybe just one Kenrath. Um, Basila has the stun force power, which, since she's not, she doesn't have a high wisdom score and she's not a consular, um, she's able to resist, everyone is able to resist her force power stun, so it, hers isn't as potent as mine. All right, uh, this is the first dungeon of this area, and it's really tiny, a really small dungeon. But there are a couple of fights, and then you couple story sequences, and then we're uh, pretty much done with the area. Before I head in there, though, I want to heal, save, and heal, obviously. <clears throat> back to the Ebon Hauk. Good work, and back to the temple. There we go. And let us move on. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. I was a little bit distracted. Vis a V, my PH1. Now, in here is a dumb droid, and we will talk to this dumb droid for a little bit and then continue onwards with the story. <laughs> I think the droid is trying to communicate with us by cycling through a variety of languages. Each time it spoke, it was using a very different alien dialect. The droid can probably understand us. The only problem is it may not have been programmed with the phenomes of a language we can understand. I recognize this language as well. It's an archaic variant of the Selkath dialect spoken on Manan. Why would a droid on Dantooine be programmed to speak ancient Selkath? It must be referring to Revan. The Dark Lord and Malak likely encountered this droid when they explored these ruins. These builders must have been an extinct people, though it is strange there's no record of their existence. Even the archives of the Jedi Academy make no mention of them. In the years before the Republic, the Huts were a dominant force in the galaxy, but they never constructed an empire. In fact, I know of no species that would fit with this information. <laughs> Ten revolutions would take more than 20,000 years. If this is true, then this droid is nearly 5,000 years older than the Republic itself. There must be some mistake. The droid is obviously not programmed with the knowledge we seek. The Star Forge sounds like some type of weapon, perhaps. Though in fact, it could be anything. Maybe. That might explain how the Sith were able to amass a fleet so quickly. But I suspect the Star Forge is more powerful than a mere factory. Maybe the droid has more information we can use. It seems to respond to you. Perhaps you should ask it something else. <laughs> Droid must be talking about poor Nemo. The council sent him here to investigate. Revan and Malak unlocked the sealed door and uncovered the secrets of the Star Forge. 
Now we have to find out what they uncovered. We have to find a way to unseal these doors to learn more about the Starforge. The Republic is depending on us. The Selkath are some race. <clears throat> Never seen them before in any Star Wars movie. They are probably just invented for this game. But they are supposedly a true neutral. Oh, there's a Jedi Knight robe on this guy. I guess I could wear that right now. Yeah, that's fine. And then we'll give Mission my Achani Iber. Ugh. Achani armor. Wow. And the strength gauntlets won't do jack shit on mission, but that's fine. It's cool to wear gloves. Alright, uh, in this room is a guardian droid. Sentinel droid. Um, and this thing is, like, wicked strong, so we gotta be real careful. Because it has this flamethrower attack that does just a buttload of damage. Um, so I want to make sure that I spread my characters out so that they don't all get hit by the flamethrower. And, um, use... Oh, I guess I can, yeah, I can use my force speed, too. So I can get extra attack off per round. Uh, mission, you're kind of stuck. Come on, mission. I think she might be far enough away that it doesn't matter. Uh, and for some reason, this droid is doesn't want to get sneak attacked. Um, so I guess we'll use Basil's night speed and see if we can't just brute force this thing. See, it's just not taking that much damage. Um, uh... Um, yeah, I was uh, for some reason I thought that uh, unequipping my second weapon would cause me to hit more, but sure. as you can see, doing that didn't change my uh, to hit value. So I might as well just keep it on. Okay, so far it's okay. I think we're good in terms of that flamethrower. It does a lot of damage and it disables is the biggest issue. Unless you make, it. I think it's a will saving throw. I'm not 100% sure. Actually, it might be Fortitude saving throw. Because you're resisting damage. Alright, this droid is going down just fine. Bastila is doing a good job of resisting the uh, blaster damage. She, you can, like, Jedi can block the blaster rifle hits. Obviously, you can see her doing it. If she died, I might be able to kill this thing. Although, oh man, everyone just looks like they're missing. I didn't realize this droid had such a high defense value. And I don't really have low two hit values either. Because I have extremely high dexterity on both of these characters. But it's going down slowly, very slowly. Um, and I would, this would go much easier if for some, I could get a sneak attack off. But as you can see, no matter which direction the droid was facing, I just couldn't sneak attack it. But I mean. Whether that be because it's facing the back wall or not. Um, oh yeah, I can... Uh, I don't know why I didn't do this before. Um, that was so stupid of me. It's a it's a droid. Why I, I should have just been using ion weapons. <laughs> that was dumb. I don't know why. Ugh. There's another droid we'll hit. And we'll use ion weapons against that one. And this will go much yes. smoother. Jesus, I did I did the same thing before. Like I fought the first droid without ion weapons, and then fought the second one, and it went much easier. Um, now there's some silly little puzzle here where they ask you about arboreal um, continents, worlds, or whatever. It should be a fairly easy puzzle to conquer, unless you don't know what arboreal means, which. When I was 13, I had no idea what that meant. So, failed this part, died, restarted, and because I didn't compulsively save back then, you're just like back at the enclave. <laughs> back where the last autosave was. In the grassland and arboreal. That's the life seal, and then we gotta go break the death seal on the other side of the room. Wonderbar. Basil is looking a little bit low. What? Okay, solve that problem pretty easily. And we'll fly through this next door. Okay, second thing, and let's not make the mistake this time. Make sure I have my ion blasters equipped. I think I have two. Yep, there's one. 
And there is Dose. Cool. This should go so much easier. <laughs> and I think that it was just absorbed with an energy shield there. Oh, oh yeah, this guy has, instead of a flamethrower, he has like an ice thing. Which does almost the same thing. Wow, this droid is dying so much faster. Mission's doing so much more damage. Ugh, it's just you don't you don't even have to worry about this one. There we go. Take him down, mission. Stripping away at his health. There we go. Boom. That was so much easier. Gosh. Um, so we gotta do the same thing with this computer. You like insert, talk to it, and then you insert your data pad, and then you talk to it again, and then you pull out your data pad, and then you answer a question. It's kind of strange um, puzzle from a game design standpoint. It's, it's you know one of those things where you just sort of try every single option that you have available to you, and uh, I mean it's nowhere near the level of adventure games from the '90s difficulty to figure out how to do it, but sometimes puzzles like that are kind of irritating. Okay, so we just got into the life and death seal that Nemo died trying to get into. And this is the room with the Star Forge map. Let's take a look-see at this bad boy. must be what Revan and Malik found when they entered this temple. This must be where their journey down the dark side began. This is a, a map. Some sort of intergalactic navigational chart. Revan and Malik must have used this to lead them to the Starforge. We could use this map to follow their path and find the Starforge ourselves. But we must be wary. They may have laid traps or concealed what they found. I, I don't know. But Revan and Malak were very interested in finding it. It must be a tool of some type. Or maybe a weapon. Perhaps the Council can tell us more. But I think this map might be the key to finding the Starforge. Whatever it is. See this world here? This looks like Korriban, a Sith world. And if that's Korriban, then this is Kashyyyk. And Tatooine. And here's Manan. But there are pieces missing. Incomplete hyperspace coordinates. Corrupted data. And there doesn't seem to be anything indicating where the Star Forge itself might be. I was thinking that too. This map can't take us to the Star Forge, but I know that Revan and Malik visited Korriban at least once. Perhaps they discovered something more there. They may have found something on each of the other worlds that completed this map. Maybe if we find all the pieces, they'll lead us to the Star Forge, and some way to destroy it. We must inform the Council of what we've discovered. They must decide our next course of action, though I suspect our task has only just begun. Sweet. All that for a level up. Sometimes there's loot back here. I guess I'm thinking of a different area. Yeah, probably. All right, let's do that level up right now. So skills, blah. Don't need computer use, so we will go treat injury. Feats, uh, third level of rapper shot is indeed available. Powers, okay, I could go for speed or, actually, you know what, we're gonna go back. I want that, I have implants and I can't put them on right now. I think that would be a boost to my power right now if I put the first level implant on. Okay, now I can think about either getting heal or night speed. That's the stasis field I'm so wanting to get. Um, I think that night speed is better because it lasts for longer. And it's actually super useful power. It gives you bonus attacks. Since we have the implant level one available to us, we're great. Other reason to get that is working on that sooner rather than later allows me to get the third level of implant sooner rather than later, which means that I can go to Yavin Station and get some yes. super powerful dexterity and wisdom boosting items, which are awesome. That means that I should not need to put any more points into the wisdom attribute when I get the level up. Mmm, there we go. Alright, so we're just gonna head all the way back out to the Enclave here. Uh, somebody is stuck? What happened here? Who's stuck? Mission stuck? <sighs> that happens way too often in this game, man. 
AI pathing is hard, I know, trust me. Where are you going, Bastila? What? Where are you going, Lane? Out to the courtyard. And I could teleport back, but I think it might just be easier to run back with my newly acquired Force Knight speed. Mm. There we go. So, I got this game for the Android phone, and I was playing it, and you notice... Oh, I forgot to unequip this. Yeah, that would be bad. <laughs> Ion damage is terrible against anything but droids. Alright, mission also had one too. We'll give her the Izel Barbo caster. Although we do have some options. Okay. Anyway, I got this game for Android phone. And something interesting about the like the way you walk forward in that game, because it's a touch screen, is you put your thumb on the bottom of the screen and then you move it to the top of the screen. And how far your thumb is towards the top of the screen indicates how fast your character is moving. But what's really weird is that in this game, I'm just pressing W to go forward. And there's like a maximum speed. And you can see I'm running with night speed right now. I'm running pretty fast. But on the Android phone, the maximum speed, if you put your thumb at the top of the screen, is as fast as you run with night speed. So if you were thinking about doing a speed run of this game, almost certainly would you want to be using the Android phone because you wouldn't have to use night speed to run that. They won't stop until you've defeated their leader. You must find him and kill him too. Thank you, young master. My daughter can now, I think, rest in peace. Here is the reward I promised you. No, please take it. This pitiful amount will never be enough for what you have done for me. Again, I thank you. I will be sure to tell the council of your great deed. Sweet light side points. Finished up that quest. There's nothing down that other direction. And we'll head back into the enclave. And maybe the game will prompt me to talk to somebody here. Oh, yep. <laughs> this is just one of those Help spots. It's happened every single time. It was less of a dream and more of a vision. A vision the two of us shared. But I am certainly willing to answer any questions the Jedi Council did not. Are you wondering why we shared the vision? Or why we even received it in the first place? To the first, I can only repeat the answer that the Council gave us. Our fates are linked. And for two as strong as we are in the Force, that amounts to a mere physical bond. As to the second, I truly don't have an answer for you. The Force works as it will. And perhaps we should be grateful for what we've been given. I... I don't know. Believe me. I certainly don't find the prospect of being joined to you enjoyable in any fashion. The Force often seems to cause events that bend the laws of probability, especially with those that are strongly affiliated with it. In this respect, you and I will simply have to become accustomed to such convenience. We are the tools of the Force. And we will do as it wills. The Force does not compel obedience. You have a destiny. But the choices you make along it are ultimately your own. What would you like to know? And are you so certain that it is not you in my dreams? I see. That is most likely vanity speaking. For I am not certain myself. Regardless, our fates are linked. The vision was no doubt meant for us both. As you wish. We really should return our thoughts to business anyway. Yes, indeed, Bastila. Thoughts to business. You of all people should know how to do that correctly. And you of all people should be the one to uh, need to do that the most. For a Jedi, Bastila is incredibly petty. It's hilarious. At least. And she, technically, I think she's still a Padawan. And I don't know why she gets to, like, tramps away on her own. Anyway, um, in one of these rooms is the girl who was in love with her droid. Yep, here she is. This just finishes a quest. I, I took the loss of my droid much too hard. I feel I must apologize. But I must. I was much too attached to my droid. It was all that was left of my husband, you see. Maybe I thought that through the droid, my husband could live again, be with me still. I think we understand. Love can do strange things to anyone. 
But I went too far. I could not see what was missing in living a normal life. Fortunately, in my grief, I returned here and ran into Samt, an absolutely fascinating man. Samt and I got to talking and, well, we have a lot in common. I think we'll be seeing more of each other. It's funny how things work out in the end. Maybe there is such a thing as fate, after all. But I think we should be going now. We have so much more to talk about. I just wanted to thank you for what you've done for me and what you tried to do. Goodbye, and thank you. Mmm, thanks for the free XP. Your boyfriend's kind of a dick, but uh, not that I really care. Okay, stasis 2 for Basila seems appropriate. And the mission got a level up as well, but it's a crappy level up. Maybe next time we'll get something better. Now, is there something back there? No. I think the guy next to the room plays Pizak with you, but since I don't really want to do that. I mean, if you were min-maxing, you definitely want to play Pizak because it gets you discounts at the Yavin store. Blah, blah, blah. Min-maxing is fun only to a certain extent where like, you can already beat the game at a certain point. Anyway, here's the council. What it was that Revan and Malak sought in those ruins. Oh, <laughs> Basilo might be derping around the background here. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. That might break out your immersion. But we must not do so in haste. We must discuss recent events in light of this new information. We should consult the Jedi archives to see if there's any mention of the Star Forge and what it might do. We must learn why Revan and Malak sought it out. Return to your ship with Bastila, and we will summon you when we are done. Padawan, you have done well in discovering the star map hidden within the ancient ruins. But there is more you must do in the battle against Malak and the Sith. We Jedi know victory over the Sith will not come through martial might. The Council has a mission for you, Padawan. I've consulted our vast archives in an effort to discover the nature of this Star Forge, but all my efforts have been in vain. Still, the Council are in agreement. The Star Forge must be found. Revan and Malak sought it out when they began their tragic fall. The Star Forge is surely a powerful tool of the dark side. The star map in the ruins showed you four planets, but it was incomplete. It did not show the location of the Star Forge itself. We believe there may be similar star maps on other planets. Each star map is likely a small piece of a larger puzzle. Find the star maps on Kashyyyk, Tatooine, Manan, and Korriban, and we believe they will lead you to the Star Forge. The Jedi numbers have been ravaged by this war. By defections to Malak's cause, and by Sith assassins. But we realize the importance of this mission. Yet if we send a company of Jedi Knights with you, we would surely draw the full attention of Malak and the Sith, dooming your efforts to failure. Secrecy is our best defense against the Sith, but it would be foolish to send you on this quest without someone to aid you, young Padawan. Bastila will accompany you, for there is a powerful connection between you two. A connection that might be the key to unraveling the mysteries uncovered by Revan. And Juhani has also asked to accompany you. After long deliberation, we have granted her request. Juhani nearly fell to the dark side. Perhaps her presence will serve as a reminder to you of the dangers of that path. Of course, those who aided you on Taris will also come. They possess skills you may find useful in your quest. Remember that secrecy and discretion are paramount to your success. You will not be able to hide the fact that you are a Jedi, nor should you. But the true nature of your mission must not reach Malak's ears. You may return here at any time. Dantooine will be a sanctuary for you, a safe haven. Here you can find supplies and whatever advice or other aid we may give you. You can leave whenever you wish. The sooner, the better. The longer you wait, the stronger Malak becomes. But first, a warning, young Padawan. The lure of the dark side is difficult to resist. 
I fear this quest to find the Star Forge could lead you down an all too familiar path. The fate of the galaxy is in your hands, young Padawan. We pray you are up for the challenge. May the Force be with you. Sweet, so the Jedi Council here just made me a apprentice slash Padawan Jedi, and now they've given me a quest to save the world. This is classic RPG business, but at least my character isn't a whiny bitch about it. Awesome, we'll head out this way, and I've since I've already done this, I know that some dude will be like, Yo, be careful of monsters. It's this guy. ガチチュイタボドロンダディホトンガクンハンカビワナクカチコンイタハドンガモチシャクパカッキーノノナマロンダディホトンガクンハンカビワナクタコンジュスタクミキグラブルモゴガチチュイタボトンハイトンピチジ
I see you intend to be childish about this. I guess I won't get anywhere continuing our discussion right now, will I? I suppose I'll just have to speak to you again later. Hopefully you'll behave a little less like a little boy and a little more like a... like a man. Oh, Bastila, we will continue that conversation later. Mark my words. All right, so this is the Ebon Hawk. Inside here is the fantastically zoomed in camera. Uh, it's a small area. I always get lost in this place for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it's just disorienting. Um, and the episode is almost over, so I'm glad you enjoyed it and could bear with me through my lethargic voice. But, uh,. I'll see you next time.